So you clicked on this video. That tells me that you're interested in finding out what are the salaries by state for software engineers. So stay tuned, we'll talk about that shortly. Anna here, your host for Holistic Developer Channel, the channel for software engineer and about software engineer experiences, lifestyle, career development, as well as personal development and so much more. And if you're not subscribed yet, please consider hitting that red button to subscribe as well as make sure to click the bell to get the notifications where new videos are coming up so you don't miss anything. And without further ado, let's get into why you clicked on this video. I want to tell you the keynote of what we will be talking about today. So we'll start with the salary by state for technical people, followed by how the salary changed by state uh, in comparison with the previous year. And uh, we'll continue to, to talk about, okay, so if you want to consider to move to a state or you think that a specific state makes more money, we'll talk about things to consider before you determine if you want to move to that state to relocate to just in case you think it can make more money. And we'll finish up with a quote as usual about this specific topic. So let's dive in. Last week, Hired.com released a report where they talk about salary by state for technical people. It probably makes sense to stop for a moment and talk about who Hired.com is and what they are about. So I'll read from their about page so I'll give you the most accurate information. And here we go. Hire.com is a marketplace that matches the tech talent with the world's most innovative companies. Hired combines intelligent job matching with unbiased career consulting to help people find the job that they love. So let's talk about uh, what are the salaries by state. And here's the map of the salaries by state. And I probably already noticed that top leading location is still um, Bay Area. It's San Francisco and it's 145K uh, for the year. Followed by Seattle area at $138,000. The next ones that were worth mentioning um, at the same salary base, it's um, Boston and Austin at $125,000 for a year and followed by Washington DC at $123,000. And another one that is worth mentioning is uh, Toronto area, and it's $1,000 Canadian dollars. So if you convert them, depending on the currency rate, it might be somewhere from $75,000 to $77,000. How did those salary change from last year by state? If we look at the highest one, San Francisco, which has the highest pay, it only changed by 2%. However, if we look at locations such as Boston and Toronto, you will notice that they increased by 9%, which is a, a big change. So obviously those areas are really trying to get more talent into their state, at their, into their location. And if we talk about Seattle, it was only a 5% increase, which anyways, it's bigger than the increase that San Francisco had. And seeing this information, maybe a thought crossed your mind. Why, sh why should I relocate to the state where they have the highest salary bump, right? It's kind of a nice thing, but before you get packing your suitcase and moving, uh, I would like you to consider the following things. First, you should consider financial things, such as what's the total compensation uh, that you will get. It's not only the salary uh, that matters. Sometimes the salary might be only 60 to 70 percent of the total compensation you get. Other things might be a sign-up bonus, a recurring annual bonus, um, it might be that you have equity that you're getting with a certain company. You, maybe every year you get five or 50, 100 stock, depending on what company policy is. 
Another thing to consider is state taxes. Let's say in San Francisco, you have to pay, I believe 10% uh, into state taxes and Seattle and Austin, they don't have that. You don't have to pay those 10% out of the salary. So you have, you can keep them, save them for retirement. It's completely up to you. What, another thing to consider is the cost of living. It's not, it's not a mi minor thing. Cost of living is important. And we all know that cost of living in San Francisco is pretty steep, it's pretty high. I believe renting an apartment, two bedroom apartment can get into 4,000, um, three to 4,000 range for a month, which is really, really a lot to rent a place. And because everything's so expensive there, not a lot of people can afford buying a place. In comparison with Austin, for the same amount of money, you could probably buy, buy a really nice house, a luxury house, uh, and feel like a um, like in paradise, let's say that. In Seattle area, um, also the houses get more expensive by year because we, we have so many innovative companies here, but also it's a the cost of living in comparison with San Francisco, it's a little bit uh, more affordable. And there is a, a nice uh, site, which I will talk uh, a little bit. Um, you can compare the cost of living between states and uh, so you can have a, a general idea how, how much um, a state comparison with another state is um, at, right? Next thing to consider is the climate. Maybe you like the sunny weather, the nice weather in San Francisco, and that's one of the other things that matters to you is salary and a nice climate. You always feel like it's summer, always like on vacation, you like to wear shorts and uh, blouses and so on, then stay there. Um, Austin, it's even though they, their increased salary, the, the bump was 9%, it's really, really hot there, as far as I can tell from what I researched online, and versus Seattle, which, yeah, we do have really beautiful days. Um, it rains a lot here, believe me, it rains a lot. Even today, it's raining today, yesterday it rained as well, and we are in July, it rains a lot. So. That's the reality, so you have to consider the climate. Also, uh, the beauty of the area. If you're a person who likes to explore on the weekend, go hiking, going bike riding, running or something like that, consider the location. How beautiful is the area? I, for once, love Washington State, Seattle area, Redmond area, like right next to our head office, headquarters office. Um, we are to a, right next to a trail, which is beautiful. Uh, whenever I want, I can go for a walk, uh, run, whatever. It's uh, completely up to me, and I really like being in a nice area. For you, if that doesn't matter, it's completely what matters to you. The other thing that you should consider are companies. Are they enough respectable and innovative companies there so you will have opportunities if you don't like the job or something happened there you can switch jobs um, have other opportunities and not being stuck with one company also what is the work culture there um, what the impact you will be doing what kind of work you will be performing there it all of this matters it matters to you and final um, thing that you should consider are personal reasons like how about if you relocate, the majority of your friends will stay where you are. So the social aspect of the move, you have to consider that um, if it will be okay for you to not have your friends at your hand reach. Uh, yes, we live in a uh, technology lead world. You can have FaceTime, Skype, Viber, WhatsApp, whatever you want, but um, it's not the same as being right next to each other face to face. Let's say that. You have to look at all of these things before you move because, yeah, the salary might look like it's a big thing, uh, you will get a lot of money, but if you adapt, add up all of this, uh, at the end of the day, it might be less than you already have. So far, we talked about average tech worker salary by state for 2019. We talked about which one is the top and how the salary changed in comparison to the previous year. And 
It's no surprise to anybody, I guess, that San Francisco is at the top with $145,000 a year. The difference, the, the fact that it's kind of surprising is that the, the salary increase is only 2%. In comparison with the other states, such as Boston, which had the 9% increase, the other place will be Toronto with exactly the same salary increase. And we talked about things to consider before moving or how to determine if you get the most for your money because it's not only the salary that matters you have to consider the cost of living and so on and i promise that i will share with you a resource where you can compare the cost of living and that one that i like the most is nerd wallet there are other online resources they're all free I'll make sure to link this one below as well as the other resources that I use for this video research. So what I like about Third Wallet is because it's really easy to use. You have to specify where you live right now, where you want to live, and what is kind of your yearly income. For the sake of argument, um, I would say that I live in San Francisco and I want to live in Seattle. And my current salary, let's say it's a thousand I'm sorry, it's $100,000. So the result that Nerd Wallet will, will tell you is that to maintain your standard of living in Seattle, you'll have to make about $80,000 with the cost of living 20% lower in Seattle. If you are wondering what is a house costing and you compare a two bedroom apartment that you can rent in San Francisco, you will have to pay about $4,000 and in Seattle, you will have to pay about 37% lower, which will be at $2,585. The other cost of living, such as transportation costs, food and health costs are lower about two to 5% in Seattle. Another state, if we want to compare another state, let's say Austin, um, with exactly the same parameters with $100,000 a year, to maintain your standard of living in Austin, you'll have to get a salary about $50,000, which tells you that the cost of living in Austin is about 50% lower. House costing are 71% lower, but an apartment rental for two bedroom will be $1,400, which is pretty affordable. Transportation costs, food costs, entertainment, and so on, they will be somewhere around 20 to 39% lower in comparison with San Francisco. Bottom line is, regardless, if you're happy where you are, that's great. The purpose of this is to be informed, to know where you get the most out of your work, out of your effort. So here's the information. Hopefully you found some value in it. If you liked it, please hit the like button if you're indeed. Also, you can hit the dislike, which is totally fine, as long as you leave a comment with, with, with what you didn't like. That way, I will know what needs to be improved. So thank you very much. Hit that subscribe button if you didn't do it yet. And I will see you next time with another great video. Thank you and happy engineering to you.